So I tried to make a photocopy from this book, this AK Water Introduction to Pali. It has a very useful table at the back with the main verbs, the principal parts of all of the main verbs, the root, class, present tense, third person singular, past participle, aorist, future, singular, causative form, infinitive, gerund, future past participle, passive, and miscellaneous parts. But it's difficult because the table comes very close to the inner scene. So some pages didn't come out well. So I don't know. Does anybody else have a copy of this book? Um, Did, is this the one that you have? Not this, though. It's a green book. Yeah, but it, the earlier edition was green. It's with the uh, hard a hardback. The card yeah, cover. It, it doesn't look like what you... It won't look like it on the outside. But then the one that you have is probably an earlier edition, which might be better for photocopying than this. Yeah, I think it will be better. Yeah, so I didn't continue with the photocopying. How many pages? That's about five, right? Five pages. If you put two pages, you could spread it out so you could get two pages out of paper, so then it will come to one, two, three, four, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I think it's about that much. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Anyway, if you come on Tuesday, if you bring that, then we could try photocopying off that one rather than this. Okay, so now we continue. We're in lesson nine. T E by Er Er. Yeah. And close, I was going through these verses from the Dhammapada, close to the top of the page. The verse starting, Pa Po Pi Pasati Bhatra. Okay, do you have that verse? Okay, first I'll read it. Pa Po Pi Pasati Bhatra. Yava Papang Na Pachati. Yada Cha Pachati Papang. Atta Pa Po Papani Pasati. The Papo Papani Pasati. Okay, there's the word Papa is used in several senses here. First, Papo, here because it's nominative, singular, masculine, so it means a person who is bad. Or, uh, yeah, the evildoer. Okay, so the evildoer sees good. Bhadra means good. Here we could say good fortune. Yava papam napachati. Yava means, what does it mean? Yeah, as far as, or in this case, since it's time, as long as. Papam na pachati. Their papa means evil deed. And pachati means to ripen. It comes from, it's the passive of pachati. Pachati in the active voice means to cook. But with two C's, it, well, it becomes 
to make it passive, it becomes first pachyati. The Y indicates a passive or but when you, you can't get a C and Y together in Pali. So what happens is that the Y gets assimilated. It becomes changed into the preceding consonant. So it becomes C. Pachati. So the image is like when you cook rice, you put in hard rice grains into the rice pot and water and you put it on a flame. Then over time, the rice gets the rice gets cooked and it becomes soft, edible rice. And so this image is applied to our actions, our karma. We perform the karma, that's like putting the grains of rice, hard rice, into the pot with water. And then as time goes by, the actions mature. That is like the cooking of the rice until when the action brings its result that is similar to the rice being cooked. Okay, so the evildoer sees good, good fortune, as long as his evil deed is not matured, is not ripened. Yadacha pachati papam. When, but when the evil deed is ripened or cooked, ata papo papani pasati. Papo papani. Ata papo papani pasati. When the evil deed is ripened, then the evildoer sees papani, which means here evil results or bad fortune. Bad things happen to him. Then the next verse is just the opposite of that. Badro pi pasati papam yava badrang na pachati yadacha pachati badram ata badro badrani pasati here badro is now the good person or doer of good the doer of good sees evil or bad fortune tough luck yava badrang na pachati as long as his good deed is not ripened. Yadacha pachati bhadra. But when his good deed ripens, atta bhadra bhadrani pachati, then the good person sees good fortune or good things. And here in the third line of, or third line of each verse, we have yada ch, yada ch. Ch normally means and. But here, to get the correct sense, better to render it as but, because it's setting up a contrast. In English, we would make better sense to use but. Any questions about these two verses? They're very simple. Any questions? I have a question about uh, me of Papa and uh, uh, Bhatra. Mm. Uh, can we render them as demerit and merit? I would say merit and demerit for specific Pali words. Um, punya as merit upunya as demerit. But it's a sense. In a sense, it's merit and lack and demerit. But I would reserve those words for 
those English words for those specific Pali words. So you know that sometimes it means uh, evil results. Sometimes it means uh, evil, evil person. Evil person. Yeah. Just by the context. Yeah. It's not very common for Papo to be for Papa to be used to mean an evil person. Usually, actually, the expression used would be a person of Papa Dhammo. It's one of bad character. Yeah, bad. I think yeah. Past lessons, we translated yeah. bad. Yeah. Okay. Next verse. Panim hi che vano nasa hareya pani na visam na banang visam anveti nati papang akubato. Did anybody try looking up nasa in the dictionary? Nasa. And long A S S A. Anybody spend a lot of time looking it up? No. It's, it's a song. Right. But I wanted to find out if anybody <laughs> spent a lot of time, hours looking up NASA. <laughs> okay, it's N plus Asa. And Asa here means. Um, Actually, it could mean either of what I think, but here I think it's the optative meaning would be, but it could also be taken a sense of of one of oneself. Seems it's rather ambiguous from the Pali. You can't tell. Could make either would make sense, but I think it's I think it's the optative verb. Because it would seem that one would need a verb here. Okay, but the sense is, okay, che means if. Yeah, now I'm quite sure, because it immediately precedes the verb. It immediately, no, immediately precedes asa, so it makes better sense to take it as a negation of the verb. Okay, if there were not if there were not, vano means a wound. Pane means what? Hand. So if there is, if there would be no wound on one's hand, hareya pane navi san. Hareya means to take. Panina means with the hand, and visan means poison. So if one has no wound on the hand, then one might take poison with it. And the reason is given here, na banang visam anveti. What is Nabhanam? Forest. Nabhanam means forest. You found it in the... Where did you find it? In another dictionary? One twenty-two. Oh, I see. They give you abana. So it doesn't mean forest, but it's a plus vana. And so, what does that mean? Right. So abana means without a wound. And it's used to describe a person who doesn't have a wound. And anveti can mean enters. 
So poison does not enter one who has no wound. Because if you don't have any wound on the hand and you touch some poison with it, then the poison won't get into the hand because the hand has no wound. And so similarly, nati papam akupato. Nati means there is not papam evil. Akubato. Akubato is what? Yeah. Can anybody explain what form of speech it is? The dictionary says the imperfect form for correlative. Which dictionary? How these text is I all I need to It says I M P F so I took it. IMPF, that seems to be imperfect. But it isn't, it isn't that. It, maybe it does function in that way, imperfect. But here it's what part of speech? I thought we had it in a recent lesson. You would have to take the positive form, not a kubito, but kubito. In the, uh, future passive? No. no. That wouldn't be it. No. It's a little, it might be a little obscure, but it's the present participle. Present participle? Yeah. That the one on page 80 again? Not 80, page 70. 70. Yeah, it's the genitive singular. I'm trying to see if we had this. On page 70, there's the model for the present participle. Yeah. Maybe we didn't have this particular type. Okay, anyway. Yeah, 70 is, you see the model declension of the present participle. Yeah, it's a yeah, singular genitive, like gachato. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to find if they, they gave it. Oh, I don't see it in the uh, glossary. Or I don't see it in the index. Ah, uh, let's see, lesson five. Yeah, page 65. Yeah. Practitioner, doer, one who practices. Yeah. And yeah, it's data, but, but here is a genitive, genitive data are the same. And then see this grammar three. Which is page 70, yeah. Okay, so kubati means, well, you don't find the form kubati, but kubati. Kubanto would mean one who does, a doer. A kubanto would mean a non-doer, one who avoids. And then a kubato is the genitive form. Genitive, data genitive. So there is no evil for the non-doer, that is for one who does no evil. So if one does no evil, then one doesn't get evil results. I have to say, some of these verses are a little tough, not so easy, and tricky, like this one, Nabanan. Yeah. Sante, Yeah. Oh, I'm okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Visa man yeah. in the third part, third line of the verse. Yeah, visam. You see, the two words are joined here for the sake of the meter. So you have to separate it as visam is one word, and anveti is another. Anveti is the verb meaning to enter. Visam means poison. So poison, then you have to take the n at the beginning. N- I'll put this, the sentence in prose. Visam n visam upanam n anveti. Poison does not enter one without a wound. Well, we all have to be careful because we all have wounds. <laughs> so we have to be careful not to handle poison. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Kadang ek upajanti niryang papa kamino sagang sugati no yanti parini banti anasava. Okay, first verse, the first line. Ek means what? A few some. Yeah, some. Upajanti. Upajanti means? Yeah, normally it means to arise, but with a special sense of being reborn. Okay, some are reborn. Gabang. Gabang means what? The womb. So some are reborn in the womb. That is, they're reborn as human beings or as animals. Niryan Papa Kamino. Papa Kamino means evildoers. And Niryan means what? Hell. Right. <laughs> so, evildoers, then you have to understand the verb is just implied from the first line. So, evildoers arise in hell. And here, the word Papa Kamino it comes from Papa Kama. Papa Kama means evil deed. And Kamino means one who does evil deed. Yeah, you find Kamino belongs to the class of nouns. Look at page 84. At the top, it's an I-N stem. So it's declined like this. You see, machari, then the plural, nominative plural, machari no. So Papa Kamino is similar one who does evil deeds, but now it's plural. Those who do evil deeds are reborn in hell. Then sagang su gatino yanti. Okay, su gatino belongs to the same type as papa kamino, same type of noun. Sugata means usually good fortune. So, sugatino means those with good fortune. But the implication is those who do good actions. So, you could say the fortunate ones go to saga. Saga means heaven. And anasava, the next line, parinibhanti anasava, here the asavas mean the basic defilements or we call them corruptions or taint, even contaminations, pollution, pollutants. 
So those without defilements, parinibhanti, attain nirvana. Any questions about this? Did they mention anything about the arahants? The, I'm sorry, these are arahants, yeah. anasava, those without defilements, those are arahants. Often in the text they also call them kinasava, very important word. This is from Kina. Which means destroyed. Plus Asava. Defilement. And so when they're joined together, it becomes a (laughs) Bahubihi compound. That's the two with two-car garage compound. That is, a person who has destroyed the defilements. How do you spell Bahu Bihi? Bahu Bihi. means it's Bahu meaning much plus Vihi which means rice then it's used to describe a field case I think a field it could also describe a town a, a village which has a lot of rice or a person who owns a lot of rice, a lot of rice fields. Okay, your turn. Go to page 128. Okay, who would like to try first? Good. (laughs) You have something up your sleeve. You did the first paragraph and not the rest. (laughs) I suspect. No. We'll save the third paragraph. (laughs) Maybe we start with Wei Chung. Yeah. Just have I heard? Right. Ekam Sapnaya Bhakrava Raja Kahe Viharati Vilu Bani. They Lubani. Vilun Bani. Yeah. Kalam Kalam Dakani Bhati. Right. Kalam Dakani Bhati. Kalam Right. One time, yeah. the blessed... Wait, first, Avon Mesutan. Yeah. Oh, I think you, you said that. Okay. First, have I heard? Right, yeah, yeah. One time, was moving yeah. at the scroll feeding ground of Velenuban. Yeah. Yeah. And Veluvenay means... It's often translated as the bamboo grove. Bamboo. Yeah, Velu is bamboo. And Vana is grove. So it's the bamboo grove. Yeah. 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 
Bhutaya. Yeah. Yeah. Panjalika. Yeah. Right. Yeah, actually this expression, Tena Kopana Samayena, though it's it's instrumental case, but if we put it into English we would say at that time or on that occasion. Yeah. Where is noble one? Yeah, Gapati Puto is Puta is son. Gapati is a householder. Usually it's like a well to do. Oh I see the glossary gives a nobleman for Gahapati Puto. No, it's not a nobleman. It's like a middle class householder. Yeah. Yeah, or the son of... Yeah, you could say a householder. A young householder. Young householder. Of course, it says a son, Puto. A young householder, Kalato. Yeah. yeah. Getting up in the morning. Yeah, or early. Kala means... Kala actually means time. But when you have this expression, Kala Seva, having gotten up in the early morning, or it's simply early, having gotten up early. So, from Rajagata. What is that from Rajagata? Salute. Salute. Honors. Namasati. Yeah, Namasati is salutes or honors. It means to do homage. Uh, jing, uh, jing Li or Ding Li. Ding Li. But you have to take Rajagaha with Nikamitva. Nikamitva. Coming out? Yeah, having gone out from. Having left. Having gone out from Rajagaha. Why are you You see this from Nikamitva. That's the gerund. You used to say coming out? Well, coming out seems to be a present participle, but it wants to show that this action is completed before the main action takes place. So first he comes out from Raja, first he leaves Rajagaha, comes out from Rajagaha. So having come out, having gotten up early, having come out from Raja, gone out from Rajagaha, then continue. With white yeah. White yeah. Yeah. Through the various directions. He did namasati. He, yeah. He worshipped the various directions. Panjaliko is hojang. Hojang. He worshipped to the various directions. Right. Eastern direction. Yeah. Southern direction. Right. Right. Northern direction. Yeah. Lower direction. Right. Upper direction. Right. And there's a typographical error in the text. For the lower direction, Hetimam, there should be an H after the second T. We could add another T. No, you don't add another T. Put an H. H. Okay, you have, okay, H-E mm-hmm. dotted T dotted T H-I. Okay. From Hetimai. Right. And these expressions, Purati Mang, Disang, and so on, what, um, what case is that? Uh, right, they're all accusatives. Because he's worshipping the direction. So it's the object of his action. Yeah. Um, Namasati is in present tense. We treat it as historical present. Yeah, all, all of these verbs, like, okay, Viharati, Namasati, they're present tense, 
But this is what they call historical present, which means the present tense used to describe a past action. It's always, almost always used when narrating a story. So we should, there are actually only two uh, main verbs. One is the uh, the other is Namasaki. Namasaki. So the, uh, the blessed one was growling. Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, worship the was alluding. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Panakopana. Panakopana, yeah. Yeah, Panakopana Samayana. 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 Yeah. It is uh, only a single word, Samayana. What does the word mean, Samayana? Samaya by itself means sh, sh, time, occasion. Sh. Shi, right? Shi, yeah. Shi, you mean timing? Time. Time. Yeah. So how do you put it in the paragraph to explain the Samayana? You have to take Tena, Kopana, Samayana. Kopana doesn't really, you can't really translate it. Kopana just, it indicates that it re, it's referring back to something the, the previous sentence. So it's Taina Samayena. Taina means that. At that time. That is at the time when the Buddha was living in in the bamboo grove. Okay, somebody actually the next paragraph <laughs> doesn't really have that much new to add. <laughs> Maybe wait till you just continue, second paragraph. There's not so much new here. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Now the blessed one. Yeah. Dressing. Well, this is not me. Vasetha is again. It's a gerund. Yeah. Having dressing. Having dress. Having dressed. Yeah. Tu banha samayang. Tu banha is. Yeah, in the morning, yeah. Morning. Yeah. This would be the same as Shangwu. 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 Is that the way it's rendered in Chinese? It should be the lower yeah. part of the day. Yeah, it's the earlier part of the day. Yeah. Okay. Exactly that. Okay. okay, so having dressed in the for, actually we say forenoon or morning. Okay, continue. Well, have to take it, take it grammatically. Patachivaram adaya. You have to remember verbs come after, often they come after the nouns that they relate to. When into? No, not yet. Okay, patachivaram adaya. Okay, now, Pata Chivaram goes together. That's Pata is bowl, Chivara is robe. But then Adaya is something different. Ad, excuse me? Not yet, no. Adaya is a gerund, which means having taken. Oh, even the glossary gives it, so you should have gotten that. So having taken his bowl and his robe, in this case an extra robe, different from the one he's wearing. There's no cell, just... Okay, we've done this already. Nivasefa, having dressed, 
Excuse me? Put on clothes. Yeah, having just having dressed in the for, in the forenoon, having dressed, Patachivara Madaya, having taken bowl and extra robe, then Rajika Hankandaya Pavisi. Yeah. Well, what went, what went into? Went into. What is the word which means went into? Pavisi. Pavisi. Yeah. He entered. entered to Ra- he entered. The object is Rajagaha. Rajagaha. And then the purpose is what? O-M. What is the word meaning that? Pindaya. Pindaya. And what case is that? Uh, the case. Um, Dated. So he entered Raj here for arms. Okay, next sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Kalas Eva. Eva. Yeah. Then we could jump all the way down to <laughs> Upariman Disa. <laughs> because it's all just repeating what was said in the previous sentence. Yeah, now I have a question. Yeah. Um, the previous one. Yeah. You put down Alavato. Yeah. Um, Alakaso. Alakaso, yeah. Alakaso. Yeah. 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 To put it into English, it wouldn't come out any differently in English. But do you know why it's different in the Pali? Okay, that's the important thing. What is the first phrase you just read here in this sentence? In this sentence, the first few words. It's a past, but just say the words. Yeah. Okay, and then the next word. First, right after Bhagavad, what is the word? No, not, I'm not asking the meaning of the Blessed One, the word after Bhagavad. Okay. Right. And what cases see Galakam? Here? No, it's not a data. Okay, but Adasako Bhagava, what does that mean? Saw. Who saw? The Blessed One. The Blessed One. The Buddha saw. Saw him. And who did he see? Sikalakam. Right. And so what case is Sigalakam? Accusative. Accusative. In the previous paragraph, it's describing Sigalaka, what he did. So see, Kalika is there the subject of the sentence. So what case is that? And then all the words that follow that describe Sigalika are also nominative. Alavato, alakeso, panjaliko. So they all end with O. But here you have the same sentence again. But now <laughs> it's describing what the Buddha saw so it's all becoming the object of the Buddha's sight or vision. So because it's now all the object, it all becomes accusative. It's always followed the, the sequence from, from the beginning. When it's opposite, it's accusative, so all the phrase going... Yeah, yeah. yeah, all of the descriptive phrase, all the descriptive words, that are, all the words that are describing the object, are also accusative. But the English will be just the same. In English, you can't see any difference. Okay, so now, in this case now, the Blessed One saw, so, um, and then the whole description comes, Sigalaka, the young householder, having gotten up early, gone out from Rajgir, 
Uh, he saw him wearing with wet clothes, wet hair, and then doing Jang. Yeah, holding out his hands and worshipping the direction. Okay, then the next sentence. Continue with it. No, yeah. start at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Eta Devocha. Yeah. Who said? Who spoke? No, no. Sigalakam is what case? Right. But Sigalaka is the young householder. So who spoke? Right, the Buddha. Actually, I think a word dropped out here. I think it should be Bhagava Etaravocha. I think that, you know, I'm pretty sure that somehow. Excuse me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite sure that's a printing mistake. Disva Sigalakan Gahapati Putan Bhagava Eta Do we have a little uh, in front of uh, Bhagava A like the one before? Yeah, it's spelled just like at the top of it. Okay, continue. Quite yeah. jump. Yeah. 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 Okay, and translate it. How is it? At first, okay, these, oh, okay, okay, Kinu, okay. Well, first, let's just go back to the beginning. Disva Sigalakam. No, don't don't read in Pali. Do the translate. Translate. Yeah. Having seen Sigalaka, yeah. a young householder, yeah. that after, after uh, having seen Sigalaka, yeah. would have said this thing to the young household. Well, actually. Sigalakam Gahapati Putang, those two words go together. Having seen Sigalaka, the young householder, the Blessed One said this. Okay. Having seen Sigalakam, the young householder, yeah. Buddha said this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it? The uh, young householder. At what case is. Kahapati Putta. Here. What case is it? No. Look at the end. What case is it? Anybody? Vocative. That means he's addressing the young man. So he's saying, why is it? Young man, young householder. Well, Tvang. Why Kinu Tvang? Why do you 
Why, young man, do you Actually, <laughs> yeah, she just put it there. There's no word corresponding to namely. So you just put a two dots. Yeah, I think it's just enough to put. You don't have to say namely. Just worshiping the various directions. I have a question. Yeah. About this God being along and being God apart. Yeah. Say that the Lord or Father. About you. A vulture. My question is that how do you know that Sigalakan Gahapati Putan goes with this this body instead of a the vulture? I mean, why isn't it uh, the the blessed one that is to him to the householder son Sigalakan instead of seeing because this one could be having being seen, wouldn't it? Excuse me? Yeah. Doesn't it also mean, it could mean having seen someone or having been seen? Yeah. So how do you know it's having seen the householder's son instead of having been seen by the householder's son? You know, we have a accusative that could be used for either verb. Yeah. I think one finds other passages in Pali where somebody sees somebody doing something and then doesn't speak to him, but some other action follows from that. And it would be constructed in the same way. Dispa, such and such in the accusative, but then instead of saying something to the person, maybe the one who sees the other one just gets up and goes away. So the, the second verb... Uh, could be one that doesn't require, or could be an intransitive verb. Doesn't require an uh, object. It doesn't require the person seen to be the object. Okay, so the Buddha can just say this, but not to anyone. Because in, in this case, the right, right, right. It's po- that's also possible. Because it, it seems to me the Buddha is saying it to. It's the here he's saying it to him. Yeah. But one could see, in fact, I think that there's a passage where, say, the Buddha will see somebody coming in the distance, and then he will turn and speak to Venerable Ananda, and it will be constructed in the same way as this, Dispa, such and such, so and so, in the accusative, Bhagava, um, Ayasmantang Anandang Eta something like that. Okay, next paragraph. Who would like to try? Um, Yurang, do you want to try that? Sure. Uh, Pita Mang Bante. Pita Mang Bante. Kalang Karonto. Evam Avacha. No. Pita Tata. Namaste Yahiti. No. Doko Aham Bante. Pitu Vachanan. Sak. Karonto, yeah. Garu Karonto, Maneto, uh, Maneto, Maneto, Pujento, Kalpaseva, Kutaya, Rajagaha, Nihamitra, Alavato, Alakeso, Panjaviko, Kutsuvita, Namasami. Namasami. Um, actually, I'm not quite sure about the translation. I'll try. He tells his father, yeah. uh, Mon, who be I, 
for me. Yeah. For me, I think in the intuitive form, yeah. Kanda is venerable. I think it's venerable father. No. So we'll be venerable with addressing to the Buddha. Bhante is addressed to the Buddha. Oh, so... Okay, I know... Uh, that a father... Yeah. Kalan Karonto Kal- would be the present participle part yeah. passing away. Yeah, dying. So when passing away, father said this, said will be Avachara, this will be Avon, saying yeah, to yeah. me, yeah, Avon, and yeah. to me. Uh, Sista would be the direction yeah. in the accusative form. Yeah. And Tata is from the grammar in sphere, yeah. in the evocative form. Yeah. Uh, and in the verb, uh, Namaste Yasi. Namaste Yasi. Would be optative second person singular. Right. So it would be you should yeah. salute dear directions. You dear. Oh. No. You dear. Okay. My dear son. You, my dear son. Okay. You dear. My dear son, you should worship for the direction. When passing away, Father said this to me. You, my dear son, should worship direction. The direction. The direction. Soko Aham Bante, so this, Ahan I, on the venerable third. Pitu would be a gentle dated form for Father. Yes, genitive. This is uh, for my father, genitive for my father's word, Pachanan, yeah. in accusative form. Uh, Sakaranto would be the present participle, but yeah. in the nominative, nominative yeah. form, yeah. to give honors to. Yeah, to honor. Yeah. To honor. So this, this is honoring my father's word. Yeah. Um, and then Garu Karanto, also present participle, so would be uh, respecting my father's word. Yeah. And then the next, also present participle, Manento, yeah. to uh, is to revere. Yeah. Revering my father's word. Yeah. And then Pujento, uh, to also present participle, to. He worshiping his words. Yeah. And this is common in Pali texts. <laughs> it's not enough just to use one word to express an idea, but they'll have like a string of words with almost the same meaning, all in the same particular grammatical form. Like just like Shifu would like that. <laughs> Shifu speaks like that, does he? Maybe he picks it up from reading sutras. So, okay. and then the rest so Sharon, uh, Sharon, do you have a question? Garukaranto, what does that mean? Garukaranto, yeah. respecting. The whole word means important to or... Giving importance to. Okay. Garu means heavy. And karoti, of course, means to make or to do. So giving weight, literally, it's giving weight to something treating something as respectful. And one thing I should point out, you see at the beginning of the sentence, so ko aha. What does the so there mean? I think this, it means is so, 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 okay, worshiping the direction? No? Simply that word so, what is its function? Uh, indicative? I'm sorry, a pronoun? What? It's a pronoun, but who does it represent? Who or what? I thought it was what? Father? He. he. No. Normally it means he. But, okay, if you haven't had it yet, 
I don't think the book has explained this, but this is some peculiar feature in Pali. When somebody is speaking to a respectable, well, even to ordinary people, but when, okay, when somebody is speaking to a respectable person and he's referring to himself, instead of simply using ahang, meaning I, he'll say so ahang, like so means he, but it means myself. It's just, refers to myself by saying this I <laughs> did so and so so it could, in translation it could almost be just neglected when doesn't translate it it's just a peculiar feature of Pali idiom um, so should I translate everything as before Starting from uh, yeah. all of Okay. All of Okay, so it's the uh, honoring, respecting, but revering and worshiping my father's word. Yeah. Uh, and then having gotten up early in the morning yeah. and having come out of uh, the Raja Gaha, yeah. uh, uh, with wet clothes, wet hair, and folded skin, I. Uh, I worship the individual direction, the various directions, eastern yeah. direction, and then he paid the same as before. Yeah. And then he's the upper direction. Yeah. Okay, so the sense here is, okay, his father at the time, when the father was dying, the father gave him advice and said, dear, you should worship the direction. And so now the son thinks that in order to follow his father's advice, <laughs> he should get up early in the morning, go out from the city with his clothes wet, his hair wet. These seem to be maybe Brahminic practices in order to show respect. Somehow one wears wet clothes and has wet hair. And then one with the hands held out in respectful gesture, then one worships, he worships the direction. Okay, then the Buddha says yeah. Um, Householder son, the six directions are now worthy of being worshipped in the discipline of the noble one. You missed one important word. Which word? Chat, chat, no. Uh, not so. Sorry, something noble discipline. No. Does. Chat, chat, six directions. No. Oh. I. No. I don't know. Okay, sorry. I think, wait, when has it? Avon. Avon, that's the important one. So how would you translate it, taking Avon into account? The six directions are not worthy of being worshipped like this. Right. Like such. In, yeah, in, in that way. In that in way. In such a way. It is not in the noble, in the discipline of the noble one young man, it is not in such a way that the sixth direction should be worshipped. So how should the, okay, maybe Wen Jun, you want to continue? Or else Sharon, you want to try? Okay, Wen Jun, you do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. The teaching of the normal one. Or discipline. Vinaya is discipline. Sati. May Sante. Bhagava. Katha. Dhamma. The Deku. Yata. Harinasta. Vinaya. Vinaya. Yeah. Chant yourself. Yeah. Right. Good. Where are they? They they're the first one. Teach that's Dhamma for me. I see yeah, the structure is a little difficult. Maybe I'll have to explain this. For sadhu me bante. Here sadhu functions almost like Ching, <laughs> almost like that. It, literally, it means good, but it's like saying, "Please, Bante, Venerable Sir, let the Blessed One teach me the doctrine, the Dhamma, Tata, in such a way." Then Tata gets connected with Yata. In such a way, tata, that, here, yata, in such a way, so that, that's yata. Oh, let me, wait, wait. Just like yata. Like. Let me just see the sentence. Let me take it in as a whole. Okay. Let the Blessed One teach me the Dhamma as the sense is as to how the six directions should be worshipped in the discipline of the Noble One. Okay, so please, Bhante, let the Blessed One teach me the Dhamma thus, tutta, or in such a way as to how, that's yata, as to how in the noble ones, in the discipline of the noble one, the six directions should be worshipped. Okay, then the Buddha says, Wenjin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Our householder. Yeah. We take care for attention. Well, first, Sunohi. First, Tainahi. Tainahi is something like, we have to translate it, well then. Well then, young householder. Or Nama, maybe it's like Nama. Well then. Nama. Yeah. yeah. Nama, Nama. Okay, so well then, young householder. Well, first, Sunohi. Listen. Listen. That's the imperative of Sunati. Sunati means to listen. Or to hear. So here, here it means listen. Okay, then continue. And, um, re- reflect upon them thoroughly. Thoroughly or carefully. Yes. Or I would say, sadhuka manusi karohi, pay close attention. Attend well. Then, next. Um, I will speak. Right. Even Bante, he considered Kahapati Kuta, Bhagavato Hacha Kosi. Right. Yes, Baron, sir. The young householder is. Um, Keep a lot of young householder. Yeah. 
Okay. I think we'll stop here because time is getting getting on. And next week we'll pick up again and finish this chapter. Then I'll try to go into the grammar for the next next chapter.